that. But it has, like, it's been practice for me too. I'm like, oh, this is legitimately a 25 minute drive. Okay, got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is a big change from the 10 minute drive that we had before, you know? Right. So really kind of getting that also into, um, you know, that's why this morning, because I knew we had this, normally I'd be getting back home exactly at 925 after I dropped him off for 9 a.m. And I was like, we got to leave early, bud. I'm like, I need a couple extra minutes to get ready for my chat with Allegra on Thursday mornings, which is where <laughs> we are right now. Yeah. Yeah. And also just, you know, asking the questions such as, so where is drop off exactly? You know, I was able to go to the main mm -hmm. office today and ask some questions because I thought only you could only drop off on one street, but apparently there are two streets you can drop off on. And one is clearly the entrance. So anyone who doesn't ask this question, I'm sure is going to the, to the entrance. Right. And so I'm like, okay, great. I I'll go to the other place. So yeah, just getting them used to it. School is right around the corner and Natasha and I talk about the run up to the new school year. We have about three or four weeks before our kiddos head off to school and all three of our kiddos are entering new stages of their educational life. And we talk about how we are working to make sure that they are prepared for this transition. Then we also talk about a spreadsheet that I do every year for my family, I call it our family's fiscal year end. And it's the way that I track things like retirement accounts and mortgage and student loans. And it's been a practice that I've had for over 20 years and it's been really helpful. And I make the case for why you might wanna start one. And why don't you sign up for our mailing list at our website, bywdreams.com because I am building a template spreadsheet for you all to use to do your own fiscal year ends to make it super easy. And we talk about all that and more on the Harness the Power of Planning podcast coming up now. Hi. <laughs> Hello. You want lipstick as we Listen, <laughs> girl, you need to be camera ready. You know what I'm saying? We have that <laughs> countdown. You got to put on a little lip. I like your lip. Look at that Thank lip. you. Thank you. Bam. Ooh, what kind of lip is that? That's a new, that is well, it's a new color that a uh, new color to me. It's 100% pure. It's called rhubarb. It's called rhubarb rhubarb. Oh, no, you know what? I'm guessing rhubarb is in English and then like French or something. Because it, it's rhubarb and then rhubarb with an E. 100% pure. <laughs> I love this brand. Uh-huh. And you know, back when I owned a store, I actually sold this product in my store. So it's been a, a long time that I've been using this product. And yeah, it's kind of like our pink, right? I was going to say, like, it's, it's like a little amped up version of our pink. It's a little more like, pow. But, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Fun. So we're back. We took a little mini vacay. It's been a couple weeks since we put out a new episode. And I'm Allegra. I'm Natasha. And for those listening on the podcast, we do put this up as an audio only podcast every week. The Harness the Power of Planning podcast. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. And if you haven't seen our bouquet of books, Natasha and I write all productivity and self care for the working mom. Our mission yeah. is to help you. Prioritize yourself, save time, and accomplish your goals. Yes, 100%. And when we say productivity, we mean like, for real, making it so that your life is easier, not so much that you are just a productivity robot and you output, output, output more. Really, it's about like being productive in the ways that matter to you. Because like, yes. raise your hand if you're somebody who's like, you, you feel like you're really, really busy, but like you're there's a lot of spinning wheels. And maybe you do get a lot accomplished, but at the end of the day, you're kind of like, or maybe the end of the week or the end of the year, you know, you're kind of like, wow, I felt really busy. I did a lot of stuff, but what did I do for me? Or what did I accomplish really? And was, was all the stuff that I did in alignment with what I really, how I want to be living my life. And those are the questions and the things that we ourselves ask ourselves and we invite you to ask and we get into those types of things. So productivity doesn't quite do it. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds yeah. corporate, right? Like how productive are you going to be? It's not from that standpoint. It's from the standpoint. Right. It's, it's thoughtful productivity. It's about thinking about doing what matters, not just doing more. Mm -hmm. And it's about strategic planning. Again, sometimes we'll tell you, maybe you shouldn't do that thing. It's not just about getting more in. It's also right. about taking things off that no longer serve you or maybe 100%. never served you. Percent, 100%. Like just to make it less abstract, I used to have a business teaching cooking classes. I invented a food product that was sold at 
at pop-up events at Williams Sonoma. And people kept asking me, when are you going to write your cookbook? And I thought to myself, I should write a cookbook. And it was on my goal list for years. And at some point I realized, I don't think I want to write a cookbook. That right? Was- it takes a while sometimes, right? Because you have all these people going, should, you should. You should, you should, you should. You should. Yeah. <clears throat> and, it- and in terms sure. of making money, it was the business that I had that made the most money. It was very successful quickly. But then I realized I don't want to be in a kitchen eight hours a day with a hairnet on. So, I you mean, know, sometimes that. it's about realizing yeah, that. You don't hair down, girl. You don't want to. Yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> this hair while I have it. That hair. Free. to be free. To be free. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> So anyway, if you're joining us for the first time, usually we have a little chit chat followed by topic. Our topic this week is family fiscal year end. And what is that? Basically, it's taking a point in time each year where you take stock of your family's assets and liabilities. And we'll get into that more. But right now, some chit chat because we are in the run up to school starting Right. This is the one month countdown this week. Yeah. For it, us, I mean, the other parts of the country, people do it after Labor Day. And it's still weird for me to get used to this because I grew up on the East Coast and it's so weird. It's still my kids have been going to school now for, you know, my my oldest is going into ninth grade. So but doing this for 10 years and I'm still like, it's so weird that they go to school before Labor Day. Like my brain still can't drop that in. Um so and it wasn't always like, like this, though. <clears throat> it wasn't always like this because oh, really? I grew up in Los Angeles and yeah. I used to go to school after Labor Day. OK, so you did. Right. So I know on the East Coast, I have friends who are teachers and have kids and they're still after Labor Day. That's still their jam. Um, of course, they get out a little bit later and they have shorter Christmas break and, you know, what, whatever. It all works out. Everybody is 180 yeah. days. But um, yeah, so I know some parts of the country, you have, you have more than a month. But here in L.A., we got less than a month before kids are back in school. Which is good for you because you get to be, we're, we're like you're back to the future. You're seeing us <laughs> talking about the run up and you're like, oh, okay, well, I don't have to think about this for another couple of weeks. So, so we're in the run up and my child is switching from having been homeschooled her whole life to going to a traditional high school. It is a small traditional high school. It is a public high school. It is a small traditional public high school because it's what's called a magnet program. I don't know if there are magnet programs all over the country. But basically, this one is focused on on a specific topic, and it's a topic that's aligned with her interests, and so that works out. And so she has never been a morning person, and I have always allowed her to follow her own circadian rhythms because there's a lot of brain science, and Natasha and I are big brain science nerds. There's a lot of brain science about letting kids sleep so that their brain can have time to develop because that's when your brain is doing so much of its repair work and growth work, right, is when you're sleeping. So this is going to be a big change for her. And so kind of in the run-up, I had put in my calendar, when we were talking about the summer, I put in my calendar, okay, someone's going to have to start practicing going to bed earlier and getting up earlier. And in this run-up, she's also had two weeks of bridge programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So Summer yeah. Bridge is when your school, I guess uh, it could be a different entity than your school. It just so happens to be that her school offers a Summer Bridge math program and then a Summer Bridge kind of like study skills program. And so this week is a Summer Bridge, then she'll have next week off, then the week after is the study skills bridge, and then she'll have one week off and then she'll start school. And I feel like it's been a really good run up for her because she's going from Mm -hmm. getting up whatever time she wants to this week summer bridge starts at 8 30 and then she'll have next week off and then the following week it starts at eight so it's getting like half an hour Mm -hmm. earlier yeah yeah what time does her school day start so her school day is actually going to start early because she wants to do a singing class which is an elective Mm -hmm. And so as a freshman, to be able to take an elective, it means that she has to start her day with period zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so ostensibly, she's going to be starting an hour earlier than her classmates. Um, However, the way her morning is set up, too, is that it's basically kind of all fun stuff her first three hours. 
That's so fun. she'll have time to wake up. Well, that's great that you already have the schedule. We haven't gotten our schedule yet, so I don't even know which classes or when for my son yet. But yeah, he's actually a half hour later in high school. They, they drop it from 8 o'clock start to 8.30 in high school. Because <clears throat> uh, educators are trying to follow the brain science, which just says yeah. teenagers need more sleep. Give them an opportunity to sleep in a little bit. Of course, he doesn't think 8.30 is that big of a, <laughs> of a benefit. <laughs> uh, especially since his brother is in middle school and has to be at school at eight and he's riding in with him anyway. So he's kind of, he has feelings about that right now. So right. We're, we're working through the feelings. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, he really doesn't like how unfair that is. Um, and I get it, you know? Yeah. It's unfair. It's unfair. Well, the thing is, is the period zero is PE. And so, I think there's some real benefits to having peri zero, period zero PE. It, like, yeah. for instance, it doesn't mean she has to change her clothes twice, right? She can go to school right. in her dress for PE. Right. Exactly. And that, if anything's going to kickstart her brain, it's PE first thing in the morning. Right. Plus, we live somewhere where it's warm. So also getting period done first thing in the morning. Complete. Yeah, for real. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, yeah. there's so much benefit to doing exercise first thing in the morning. Right. So that's, yeah. that's great. That will definitely wake her up and she will be like raring to go. She won't be like nodding off in homeroom, you know? <laughs> exactly. I remember those days for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Yay. Yeah. So we're easing her into, so that's one of the things that we're doing to ease her into, you know, school starting also, I'm really grateful for the bridge programs because I was doing my own bridge, which I always do every summer. She's always had school during the summer. It's been a little bit less than during the regular school year. But it is nice having some other educators take hey, that oh, off of my plate. 100%. Yeah. My son's doing a bridge program, too. So, like, just they're doing it to have the magnet kids, two weeks of it, all just incoming freshmen so that they can you know, kind of bond and get the chance to know each other before the school year starts. Unfortunately, we missed the first week of it. It's a two-week program. So he's in the second week, which is super fun, though. It's like, it's really more of like, a, it's more of like a camp atmosphere than like a yes. school, right? So like they're doing tie-dye, they're doing, you know, whatever. They're making little films. They're, they have a oh, okay. tomorrow. You know, so it's really more of like, kind of like a bonding camp experience than a academic experience just happens to be at the high school. And, you know, right. they're getting to have the lay of the land. It's a huge campus. So they're getting a chance to like, as incoming freshmen, that's such a leg up. Um, Absolutely. Because you know, like that campus is confusing to me. We went on that right. tour and I was like, wait a second, it's humongous, right? And so um, it's great as an incoming freshman to have a little bit of bearings, at least, you know, have an idea of where yeah. you're going and what your class is and all that stuff. So um, for them and for us, right? Because it's a new campus for you. It's a new campus for me. Right. Like getting for me to just practice that drive. Although exactly. my husband is the one who's going to be doing it in the morning. Um, and we're just kind of trying to figure out the, the second half of that. But it has, like, it's been practice for me too. I'm like, oh, this is legitimately a 25 minute drive. Okay, got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is a big change from the 10 minute drive that we had before, you know? Right. So really kind of getting that also into... Um, you know, that's why this morning, cause I knew we had this normally I'd be getting back home exactly at nine 25 after I dropped him off for 9. AM. And I was like, we gotta leave early, bud. I'm like, I need a couple extra minutes to get ready for my chat with Allegra on Thursday mornings which is <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah. And also just, you know, asking the questions such as, so where is drop off exactly? You know, I was able to go to the main office today and ask some questions because I thought only you could only drop off on one street, but apparently there are two streets you can drop off on. And one is clearly the entrance. So anyone who doesn't ask this question, I'm sure is going to the, to the entrance. Right. And so I'm like, okay, great. I I'll go to the other place. So yeah, just getting them used to it. I mean, I think when I, I went to a small high school and I had done some sort of like tours and orientation before, but this school is many, many times bigger than my high school was just the physical layout of it. Totally. Yeah. It's a big school too. Like yeah, the campus is big plus multiple yeah. buildings, right? I mean, I went to a high school, everything was in one building. We were contained. It had multiple right. floors, so you had to go up and down and whatnot, but you weren't going like, oh, that's in this other building across campus. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that is not... Um, 
but I think your daughter's school and my son's school is it, that is the case where there's multiple buildings where they have to like transfer to, you know, and that yes. is definitely different. Yeah. So just to give them the lay of the land, I I'm grateful for the bridge program for that. And just, you know, I was explaining because of course my kiddo had feelings about going to this bridge on Monday. And as we're driving, I said, look, 99% of fear is fear of the unknown. And most of the time that unknown thing that you're fearing never even happens. And so yeah. rather than having fear of the unknown, why not think about all the possibilities that are going to happen? Like you might meet your favorite teacher today. You might meet your, be your new best friend today. Mm -hmm. you, know, you might find out that you're actually really good at something that you didn't think you were really great at. And so even like, I, I feel it's funny you mentioned this about fear because my youngest son had to go get blood drawn as part of his yearly physical. It's the first time he's ever had that. He's only ever experienced needles as shots, you know, which are, uh -huh. you know, quick and painful depending. Um, but I, he was terrified and he had to do it early in the morning because he had to fast and all that kind of stuff. Right. He right. did not want to get out of bed this morning, you know, and, um, and I was just trying to, you know, assuage his fears and same, basically the same thing where I was like, honey, money. And like, I don't love needles either it's more of like, it feels weird more than it is painful. You know, right. in my experience with the blood drawn, I'm like, it just feels weird to me. And I don't, I personally don't love it. I get really queasy. That's just, you know, my husband loves to like watch it go in and watch the blood come out. That's not me. I don't like that. I'm just like, oh. I like to see how fast I can pump it out. I have very low <laughs> blood pressure. I have bad experiences with blood draws. I, I pass out. I've like tried to get blood before. Oh, like, wow. Such low blood pressure that it takes forever. Like, so it's not like mm. I can't get it to, even with the pumping, I, it just doesn't happen. So like for me, it's not great, but the worst, the worst, as far as the feeling goes is it's like weird. It's a little, no, it's, maybe. it's true. Like you're saying it's weird. It's weird. It's not painful. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so he really, 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 really was terrified. His dad took him. And, um, and then I get a call as I'm dropping my other son off. Hey mom, I just did it. It was so interesting. It was so, did, did, did. you know, like, and he <laughs> wildly different. And my husband was like, he's that person who watches. He's like, I'm going to make him watch it. And I was like, can we just see if he wants to? <laughs> and so apparently afterwards the nurse thanked him for having him watch it. She's like so many people don't let their kids watch it. And it becomes even more fearful and stuff. Mm. So, but this is a perfect example. And I would just said to him, I said, Hey buddy. So I'm like, A, I'm really proud of you for having the courage to, you know, do it anyway. I know you're really scared and B let's put this in our memory bank as one of those things. Like, even though you're afraid, a lot of times, you know, whatever it is that you're really afraid of either A doesn't happen, like you said, or it's just not even close to as bad as we imagine it. Right. And so yes. even if you can't get to the point of like, maybe I'll meet new friends, maybe I'll meet teachers da, 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 da. Um, at the very least, to steal yourself up enough to just try it, right? And then find out what it's really like. Because man, we can really build things up into something that it really doesn't wind up being at all. Right. How many times have you had that experience, right? Where you're just like, oh my God, it's gonna be so awful. And then you do, it, you're like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> right. You know. Well, and I also did one other thing, which was I said to her, I said, honey, when baby chicks are ready to fly and they don't want to leave the nest, what do the parents do? And she's like, they push them out. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, babe, baby chick, we're having a little bit of that moment. Like, we know that you're ready to do this. Right. You're just going to have to trust us that you're going to get that nudge to go out of the nest. And she was like, oh, okay. And then- That's her, we had, Your kid is so, like, she loves animals, y'all. Yes. So, like, she 100% understands that. That's a great, that's a great analogy. Absolutely. What so you know, pro tip, whenever possible, use stories that will resonate with your kiddo. Are they into the arts? Bring up an art story. Are they into sports? Bring up a sports story. I know animal stories are always gonna go over way better with my kiddo because she's an animal person. Yeah. Second secondly, another interesting life lesson that we had happen this week was when my kiddo last night said you know, I don't feel like going tomorrow and it's optional. So I'm not going to go. And we were like, I'm sorry, where did you get the message that it was optional? And she's like, well, I mean, I chose to go. It's not like something I have to do. 
And then we got into explaining. And I think the reason why she has this point of view is because she's been homeschooled her whole life. When right. she has attended quote unquote classes, they've always been extracurricular things, right? Like Dungeons and Dragons or martial arts or things that were not academic. And we said, this is not like that. Also, this is your math teacher. This is going to be your math teacher for the next four years. Is that the sort of reputation you want to establish with your math teacher that you just like don't show up because you don't want to? Yeah. And so that was a whole big mind shift too. So I'm grateful for all these learning opportunities that the Summer Bridge has brought up that you know, life lessons, sort of opportunity, learning opportunities that we weren't expecting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> it's super fun. Yay. Yeah. Like, new, new things constantly pos popping up, new challenges, new ways of thinking, thing, thinking of things. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll be talking about this more as we continue on this run up to the school year. So tune in next week for whatever chit chat we're talking about with regards to that. But let's talk about the fis family fiscal year end. Yeah, and I'd love to also hear, put in the comments, what do you and your family do to prep for the school year? Uh, what are the things that you find to be challenging? Um, for us, it's going to be school clothes shopping this time because we've been a, using a uniform for the last three years. That kind of thing. We'd love to hear your your tips, tricks, and things that you love to love about, or maybe not love, but have found maybe ways to um, bridge bridge this time, since we're using the word bridge. Summer bridge. Yeah, Summer Bridge. It's such a good it's such a good concept, Summer Bridge. Like it does it makes a lot of sense and we'll talk about it more. So family fiscal year end. So when my husband and I got together, I started doing a fiscal year end for us because I just like looking at numbers and so I wanted to have, you know, if you if you've listened to us before, you've heard us talking about habit tracking and doing, you know, a monthly check in monthly course. Correct. I just like to have that up. And so for some reason, I decided on July and I'm guessing it's because both of us worked at a company whose fiscal year end was also mm -hmm. June 30th. Yeah. And so it was just kind of a reminder to myself. Hey, Plus, who wants to be doing this in Christmas time? Do you know what I mean? Like exactly. Who's got, who's got time to do it in the end of December. Like nobody's got time for that. Exactly. So, you know, but really you can choose any day. Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That you want. And, you know, some of us get, you know, quarterly statements from maybe retirement accounts or whatever like that. When you get one of those, that might be a good reminder. Like, Hey, Oh, I got my spring statement. I'm going to do my fiscal year. end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter when you start it. The point is, is that you pick a point that is convenient for you to do it and you start and then every year you check back in. And I do think it's important, not in the short term to check back in every year, but in the long term, it's really important to just pick a random time and check back in because that way there's no emotion attached to doing it at that point, the check-in, right? Because for instance, if you're like, oh my God, the stock market's going crazy, I'm gonna check in now then you're always going to, you're going to have these like weird little elevated blips in your data. Like I did our fiscal year end a few weeks ago <clears throat> Excuse me. and, and right now the stock market's going crazy, right? But yes. the stock market's probably going to settle down in the next nine months. And so if I compared, if I said, oh, I just want to check randomly now because the stock market's going great, that's going to mess up your data. So it's good to just pick a random date and then stick to that date. This, this is something we also talk about with the monthly course correct. Like if you just add up, like, oh, how much did I work out this month? And you pick some random date, your data is going to be influenced by the fact that you were feeling good about the data at that point, or you were feeling bad about the data at that point. But if you just say, hey, the end of the month, I'm just going to add everything up always, then that helps to even out so that over years, it gives you information that is much more useful to you. So at this point, I've been doing a fiscal year end for you know 25 years. And so the trends are wow. evened out in a way that is useful to me, you know, because I've lived long enough now that I can see 
and ups and downs. And so when, when the stock market's going crazy in a good way or a bad way, it allows me to just be like, whatever, mm -hmm. I've seen this before. I'm used to this. It kind of immu it immune, Im it immunizes, Immunize. immunizes. <laughs> yeah, it kind of immunizes you against that kind of change. So pick a random day and then stick with it is my first tip with picking a fiscal year end, okay? And then what sort of information are you going to gather? You're just gonna gather all of your assets and all of your liabilities. And so what are your assets? Assets are anything that is worth money. So if you have retirement accounts, those are assets. If you have checking or savings accounts, those are assets. If you invest in a stock market and you have a cash stock market account, that is an asset as well. So those are all the assets. And you're just going to use, like if you have Excel, use that. If not, use Google Sheets. Google Sheets works just like Excel. It's totally free. You don't put your account numbers in there. <laughs> Right? Like, don't put, oh, my stock market account no. with Merrill Lynch no. is, yeah. D don't put account numbers or passwords nope. in there. Come nope. up with some sort of nickname for the account. You're just keeping track of the dollar amount, right? And you don't have to do this in a spreadsheet oh. either, although it's easier if you know how to use this. And I yeah. am going to, oh. I'm going to create a template for this. So if you go to our website, and sign up for our mailing list you will get the you will get the template for this and it will do calculations automatically for you because it'll sum things up for you it'll subtract things for you etc so then it'll be really clear what you have to enter so for those listening to the podcast go to bywdreams.com so so those are your assets and then your liabilities are anything where you owe money so it could be a, a mortgage. It could be a car payment. It could be your student loans. Those are kind of the big things that you might owe money. But then there are also kind of the short-term places where you'll own my, owe money, like your expenses. So if you're paying rent or if you are uh, paying off a credit card, those are also liabilities, although those are sh considered a different type of liabilities. You know, one is a fixed liability, a liability. Fixed meaning like you have a long term in which you're going to have to pay it off, like a mortgage, variable meaning it could change, right? Like if you're renting right now, you might not be renting in a year or you might change apartments and your rent changes. So that's considered something that's variable. And this will all be a lot clearer when you look at the spreadsheet in terms of really easy, easily laid out. But I highly, highly encourage you to look to do a fiscal year end because it kind of takes the power away from numbers when you are aware of what they are, right? I understand the desire to not know things, right? A lot of people are like, I just don't want to know. <laughs> I, I just yes. don't want to know how much I'm spending or I just don't want to know how much I owe. And this is kind of going back to what we were talking about, about that fear of the unknown, right? You're giving the numbers a whole lot of power over you. If you give in to the, oh, it's too scary. I just don't want to look at it. Because the reality is, is you can't do anything about it in the positive or negative until you know what you have. So I know, I just want to tell you, I know the hardest thing is going to be getting started. But once you get started, I can promise you that in five years, it will be so helpful to have historical information to look back on. It really makes me feel so much better to see that even though I've lived through what at this point, like two recessions that I've been, I've been an adult for two recessions, I think at this point, you see that things recover and it, it does so much for my stress. It brings my stress down so much to have that historical information. So that's my pitch for a fiscal year end. It also... I also don't love it because I am that person who like numbers make me want to gag. Like I just have, uh, it's just, uh, it's always, it's always been the case. I found out much later in life that I have basically number dyslexia. So this is why I have like a lot of stress around numbers and I've always had problems in math class. And so even just talking about it, it makes my stomach go Ugh, like, like always, always, always and forever. But we haven't, as a family, we have not done a fiscal year 
after review. Um, but what I've been doing, which I've talked about before um, here at BYWE, is our money love dates, where we check in weekly when we are trying to really rein things in and get a really good handle on things, and then maybe bi-weekly after that, um, just because that works for us. And so that's much more of a like little microcosm look at it, but we haven't done, and I wish we had, really, because so many things, like when we really started doing our money love dates, when we were like, oh my goodness, we have you know this unsecured debt over here, we have to pay off this thing, and da 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 and then we would we put everything on a whiteboard because we have neurodivergent challenges in this family. Put it in a book or put it away. It falls out of existence for us. So we would hang it in our bathroom. My husband and I, we hang our whiteboard in the bathroom. So you're sitting down and you're taking care of business and you're like, hmm, it's always there in existence, right? Plus, we wanted to put it in a more private area than like our living room where everybody could just see our financial life, you know? But regardless of that, is you'd start to see, oh, we paid that off. That that balance went to zero. And if we had done it in a fiscal, so eventually, once we paid off like the car, this loan, blah, 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 you don't get a chance to really sell it in a way that the way about where you would do it in a spreadsheet kind of way um, that you then can look back on, check back five years, 10 years, and be like, wow, we really did take care of all of these things that like even so if right now something feels overwhelming uh, and you're just like how are we ever there have been times that you've done it i wish we had done fiscal reports you know it's good that we're getting granular and going weekly but it's great to have an overview too well and i feel like there's definitely a place for the weekly stuff like for instance if you're saving money for something that you're planning to purchase in less than one or two years right such as a car or maybe you know you want to invest in some sort of equipment. Maybe you want to be a photographer and you want to buy a really fancy camera, right? There's definitely something to be said for having some sort of tracker in your planner. And if you if you type in budget trackers on Pinterest, there's a million, right? Basically, they just kind of look like funnels or they look like a thermometer, right? Where you're just adding money in every week and you get to highlight it. And you, there's some excitement in getting to highlight that as you're working towards a short-term goal such as those. So definitely the benefits of, and you can do the opposite for paying off debt, right? You can erase a tracker and that can be really fun to like erase the dollars as they, as you get, as you pay them off. So absolutely there's a benefit in doing the short-term tracking and you can still go in and fill in the data for this long-term tracking. You know, you can go back and look at your July, 2023, bank or mortgage or whatever statements, right? Because you have access to those online and you can fill it in because it is just nice to see that number go down and to see other numbers go up. And it takes some time to see because of the craziness of certain markets, it takes some time to see that, you know, constant upward trajectory that happens over the long term, but it's really worth it. So as someone who's come out the other side, I just want to say, Trust me, there are days when I don't want to look at the numbers. And, well, you know, one of my best friends, it was, I don't know, maybe a month ago, she said, oh my God, do not look at your stocks today. Like the stock market was so horrible. And I was like, okay, great. I'm not going to look today. I, I already uh -huh. did my fiscal year end. I'm fine. I don't need to look. And then there are times when the stock market's going gangbusters and it's uh -huh. kind of fun to log mm -hmm. in. But you have to remind yourself, well, this too can pass. So... <laughs> Definitely, I'm a fan of doing both. All this is very good advice. It's difficult to get started. It's difficult to make that first. It's uh, Well, it's funny because we were just talking about courage, right? And it's one of those things where, you know, find, if you have the fear of doing it, find a, an opportunity anyway. That's what courage is all about, right? It's not about not feeling fear. It's about feeling fear and doing it anyway. That's the courage part, right? Because, you Absolutely. know, we're going to feel fear. that We can't allow that, right? So, and then... Just like with my son today, he's like, whoa, that's so interesting. That's so cool, right? You might be able to get your picture down. Now, sometimes my husband and I have sat down after we've not been doing our money love date. And we have to get back in the, it's always that first hurdle. And, you know, you, sometimes you sit down and you're like, whoo, this picture is not great, you know, but it's at least reality and you're able to handle on re handle reality, right? So it can be painful. It can be uncomfortable, but um, definitely worth it. Absolutely. So if you are a baby bird right now, teetering on the edge of the nest, saying, I know I should do some more financial tracking, but I'm scared to do it. Allow us to be the parent birds 
encouraging you to spread your wings and fly. And we will have a spreadsheet for you to use. Just go to bywdreams.com and sign up for our mailing list. And you will get that in one of our next emails. So thank you for joining us. I have to go run and pick up my little from her bridge class now. <laughs> we'll see you next but week. Join us next Thursday. Dream wild, wild dreamers. Thanks for joining us for the Harness the Power of Planning podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen.